We are live. Well, good afternoon and welcome to my abode here. I appreciate you all showing up this afternoon. Uh, my name is Robert Porterfield and I'm an officer in General Washington's Army. And I've been asked to talk a little bit about some navigation techniques that we're using. And one of them is with the sextant. So we can direct our attention over here. So basically, we're going to be talking again about a sextant. You know, what is a sextant? And then why do we need one? So a sextant basically is a navigation tool and it's used to help locate yourself on a position on the earth. It's kind of like you've seen these before where it says you are here. Well, a sextant will identify where you are and that's the purpose of it basically. Why do we need one? Well, that's what my presentation here is going to be. So this is what a sextant looks like. It's a handheld device. This gentleman over here is using it and what he's doing is looking through it and he's measuring an angle to a planet and usually that's Polaris or the North Star in relationship to the horizon. And that angle that shows up there will then translate into a position on the Earth. So why do we need a sextant? Here's a map from the late 1700s. And on it, on this, we've got Philadelphia on one side and Pittsburgh on the other side. And so it's a map and you can walk along the path here and you can follow that path. You're gonna cross over a river here, make a turn to the left and then to the right and travel some more distance. You're gonna cross through a mountain range here and down here you can see that. So we've got a a mountain here in the background itself. So when you're on the land, you really don't need a sextant necessarily because you've got a good map and you've got uh, parts of the land that you can identify and work with that way. However, what happens though, if you get to a situation like this, here's Boston and say you want to take a ship from Boston out across the Atlantic. So you'd start out here and travel across a lot of water and it would take several weeks for you, in fact, a couple of months on some occasions to make this journey. Well, what happens when you get out here, say in the middle of the Atlantic? What happens then? Well, you end up with this, a flat ocean. Now compare that with what we were looking at just a moment ago where we had a nice map and we had some land and terrain that we could measure against so we know where we are. But now here we are out in the ocean with no way to know really exactly where we are. You could look in any direction, turn yourself all the way around and be seeing the same thing. So we really need to have some way that we can identify where we are. Well, some really, uh, brilliant scientists in our time have come up with a way to do that. And these lines that are here on the globe are called lines of latitude. And it starts at the equator here and goes up in increments of 10 till you get to the North Pole where it's zero. And it goes the other way also down to the South. So what is this good for? Well, take an example here that we're in America and we'd like to travel over to Spain. And if you look here, you can see that this particular latitude is 40 degrees. So what we would do is using a sextant, measuring our position on that line as we're going across and eventually make it. If we should drift off of that line, maybe it's weather or the currents in the ocean that are pushing the ship in a different direction, then we would use the sextant to say, well, we're, we're actually here and we need to be down here. So then using compass, we would turn that ship a little bit to the southeast and then go on across. So that sextant is gonna come in and help us do those kinds of things. Now, if I go back to my uh, Austin chart, here it is. 
So if I go back to this picture of Boston, remember we were going to take the trip across the ocean. Notice here on the right-hand side, right at the top, it's showing 42 and 43. So those are lines of latitude. And again, it's precise than using increments of 10. Now they've got it down to eighties, and really it gets more than that. But again, using these lines of latitude, and if you look down here on the this picture, you can see that those stretch across and then they go up, up the way. So if you're trying to get to England and maybe you're off of that parallel or latitude a little bit, you can correct back, back to it and make sure then that you reach your destination. So I mentioned that the, the purpose of that sextant was to measure angles. And all of this navigation is pretty much done using the North Star, which is called Polaris. The North Star does not move relatively in the, in the hemisphere. So the Earth is tilted such that that star is in the same position all the time. The moon will cycle around and move, the sun comes and goes, the other planets do, but that star stays in one position. So that becomes the reference point for the sextant. And the way you find it is, you'll notice here, this is called the Little Dipper, and then there's a handle on it, and it's at the end of that handle. On the other side, is this is called the Big Dipper, and the handle of this comes up, and there, end of the cup there has two stars. These are very bright, and if you follow those straight across, they'll take you right to Polaris. So using the Big Dipper, which is very easy to see, as long as there are no clouds in the sky, and, and when you're out on the ocean, there's no lights or anything to dim that. So it really comes through very clear for you. Now, I want to show you something, though. This does move in the sky. It rotates a little bit. And actually, now, if you go out and look for the Big Dipper, you're going to see it in this position. But it's still, those two pointer stars are still pointing at Polaris. So that gets us directions there. So it's a very handy thing. Let me show you now how we're going to build our own sextant. Very rudimentary, very uh, plain, but it'll do the job. So what you're going to need four things. You need some tape. You need a straw. And I would recommend if you're going to use a straw like this that you get a big one, you know, like for a milkshake or something, because you're actually going to look through this at the North Star, and so it needs to be big enough that you can see through it. We'll need a washer, a piece of string about six inches long, and then a protractor. So let's put one of these together. So here I have my items that we just talked about. Now the washer, I've already tied the string on to it so we save some time. But what this is going to do, it's, it'll be like a pendulum, and what you'll see in a moment how this works. Now, first thing we need to do here is attach this string to the protractor. Now, I want you to notice that right at the top of the pier, it's kind of hard to see, but there's a little notch there, a little black line right there. And so what you'll need to do is when you attach this string is to make sure that first off it'll have room to hang down and then when it comes over the top here that it's right on that line you just take a piece of tape and tape it there so what you end up with is this and what, what's, what we're going to do is we're going to tilt this. And as we tilt it, when we're looking for the North Star, it's going to, because of this pendulum effect down at the bottom, it's going to show you the number of degrees. So depending on how this is tilted, the degrees are going to change. So what, what we need to do now is put the um, straw on top here. so that we have a way to look through here. And when you 
put this on, you want to put it right up at the top. The two pieces of tape. Just like that. So now we have sort of a rudimentary sextant. And what you can do with this, I'm going to demonstrate. So I would maybe if we look off over here is where the North Star would be. So I would take this I our sextant that we just built, and I would look through here and tilt this until I can see the North Star, and then kind of hold, grab a hold of that string because we need to know what that measurement is. So it's a very simple device, and it, it's very easy to use. Now, if we'll go back over here, what we're going to do is we're going to start with the 90 degrees, and then we're going to subtract from it whatever the number is that we just saw on our protractor. And let's say it was 50 degrees. So 90 minus 50 equals 40, and this is your latitude. This is how far you are south of the North Pole. And by the way, uh, Willard is uh, Willard, Ohio is actually at 41 degrees north latitude. So if you do this on your own and you come up with something in the 50 range, then that's pretty close and, and you'll have a good measurement of how you uh, found the latitude that you're currently at. One last thing I want to leave you with, and that is do not point this at the sun. Use it at night. Get out there and have some fun with it and, and measure some different stars if you want to. But do not use it during the day so that it's pointing at the sun. Because if you look down that straw at the sun, you're going to hurt yourself. So we don't want that to happen. So that's the sextant. So what is it? It's a navigational tool that has been used for hundreds of years. And what it does is to help you locate your position on the Earth using that grid with the different latitudes. So if there are any questions, anybody have any questions or anything? How would you use that on uh, like rough seas? On rough seas, you would have to take uh, several readings. So try to up to the top, try to get a reading at that point, And then next time it comes back up, you'd have to do it again. If it's too rough, then you wouldn't, you wouldn't be able to get the reading. If it's cloudy or rainy or stormy, then you wouldn't be able to get a reading either which uh, if you, you know, you could go a day or so without that, but you really need to have those as close as possible. You should take a reading every night, maybe a couple readings just to be sure. All right. Any other questions? I guess not. Well, thanks again for stopping by and we'll talk later. Next is George Orchard. Yes. Okay. I just have to post.